Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and Apple finally did it. They finally announced the date for the March event that will be happening at the Steve Jobs Theater. So the event will take place on March 25th. Now we've done quite a few breakdowns on what kind of products we can expect. We even already did a March preview event before Apple even announced the event. You see how this kind of works, how we can kind of predict when Apple events will be. But I thought now that the date is officially announced, now that we actually have something concrete to go on, I figured we would take this video to talk about what we can expect at the March 25th event and maybe some things we might get and maybe some disappointing news for Apple fans out there as well. So let's get right into the video with the invitation to this event. And on this invitation, it says that it is showtime. Funny enough, Apple actually used this invitation in the past in 2006 when they announced the Apple TV. So with a tagline like it's showtime with the countdown timer to this event, three, two, one countdown that was used for old films, we can expect that this event will focus heavily on Apple's rumored TV service. Apple has spent quite a bit of money on original content, billions of dollars worth of money on producing their own TV shows for their own streaming service to kind of challenge Netflix, Amazon, and even Disney which is rumored to be getting into their own streaming service very soon, Apple itself will be coming out with their own streaming service. So a lot of people are wondering what kind of shows we're going to see out of Apple, what kind of direction they will take this streaming service. Will Apple only offer original content? Will they offer third-party content as well? Will this be bundled into some sort of subscription that will include iTunes movie rentals, iTunes movie library, or even iTunes TV shows? or will Apple just be going their own route by only offering original content? We also don't know the price of this service. I would guess it would start at $10, maybe $15 for a family plan, but we've also seen Apple bundle in TV shows like Planet of the Apps, with the Apple Music subscription service. So will that precedent take place? Will these TV shows live in the Apple Music service? Will Apple Music maybe get a new name to incorporate movies and television? Or will this be its own unique service? And I personally think that this will be its own unique service given the fact that Apple is looking to grow their services revenue. It wouldn't make sense for them not to charge an additional fee by offering movies and television, so I wouldn't expect them to go the same route by bundling in these TV shows with the existing Apple Music subscription. Now, aside from this TV service, we're also hearing a lot of rumblings about Apple's news service also being at this event. A little while back, Apple bought a news magazine subscription service called Texture, and basically that was pitched as the Netflix for magazines, so you would pay one monthly fee, and then you would get access to all these different categories of magazines. Apple bought them a little while ago, and they are expected to kind of roll out their own Apple news service by offering magazine subscriptions as well as subscriptions to newspapers and other web content as well. In fact, we even have seen some leaks in the Mac OS and iOS betas kind of pointing to this new subscription service and the categories that will be in this new subscription service. There already is code in the betas kind of indicating that this is ready to launch, that it's probably going to be announced at the March 25th event and be readily available shortly after. We also heard things in the past that news services were arguing with Apple on what kind of of cut Apple would get from this service. So we heard reports that Apple was kind of asking for a 50% cut in the services revenue for these newspapers and a lot of newspaper publications were pretty upset with that number. And with the news service and with this TV service, it really remains to see what kind of unique advantages Apple will have other than just providing these services. Will Apple be able to offer unique content that really stands out from the other streaming services out there? Will Apple have any unique advantages by owning the platform that these are distributed on? Also, will Apple bundle these services in any way. It's really hard to kind of sell all of these individually, an individual new subscription service, an individual TV service, and of course Apple already has Apple Music, so an individual Apple Music subscription. Could Apple take all of these subscriptions, maybe roll them all into one product, maybe 
cut down the price. So maybe you're not paying $10 separately for all these services, but maybe by bundling in movies, music, TV, and news, maybe Apple could bring that to a $20 or even a $15 subscription service every month that would be a little easier to swallow than paying $10 a month separately for all of these services. This event will also be a good indication to see how serious Apple is in the services space. We know that Tim Cook has said on investor calls that the services space is an area to look forward to increased growth in. So this will be one of the first events where you really see Apple going forward and pushing that services narrative. So it's going to be really interesting to see what sets them apart from the competition and really what unique features and what unique price points Apple can bring to a subscription service. But if you're like me, you probably aren't as interested in Apple's ambitions for a subscription service. You're probably more excited about new hardware and will there even be any new hardware at this March event? And that's where the disappointment might come in. We've heard some rumblings that maybe there won't be any new hardware at this event, maybe it will be released separately in a press release. But even if it is released in a press release, it should be released shortly after this event, or maybe even shortly before this event happens. And I feel like I covered this a lot on my channel already, but let's just kind of go over all of the hardware that we might expect at the spring event. So one of the first rumors we've been hearing a lot of is this new iPad. Now this won't be anything like the iPad Pro with a completely bezel-less screen, but Apple will be shrinking the bezels on the 9.7 inch iPad by just a little bit to a 10 inch or a 10.2 inch screen size. Now aside from that minor reduction in the bezel size, we aren't expecting any major revisions to how this iPad looks. So although we can expect it to look very similar to the 9.7 inch iPad, we are expecting it to get some refreshes on the internals. And that would be a bump in the processor. So the current iPad is an A10 chip. So I think we could probably expect this iPad to have an A11 chip inside of it. We've also heard some rumors that it will be including a smart connector. So maybe some more pro features making its way down to the budget level iPad. Speaking of iPads, we've also heard rumblings about an iPad mini in the works, and it's been a while since they updated the iPad mini, but unfortunately, much like this iPad refresh, this iPad mini isn't going to have a new design at all. So you can expect the same 7.9 inch iPad mini that we're used to with just a focus on updating the internals inside of it. Current rumors point the refresh to only be at an A9 chip. I'd personally be surprised if that was the chip inside of it, I would more expect an A10 chip inside of it, especially if Apple doesn't plan to keep updating this on a yearly basis. By putting in an A9, that's really going to not future-proof it that long. But for the Mini, those are the only rumors I'm hearing is that there's going to be a new Mini and that it's going to have a better chip inside of it, but no redesign for it. So not too many exciting features there. We've also heard some rumblings about a refresh in the iPod Touch, and again, if this iPod Touch is updated, don't expect any major redesign out of it. Just expect it to get updated chips inside of it, much like the iPad and the iPad mini. So again, we could probably expect an A10 chip inside of that new iPod Touch. It still remains to be seen if it will keep the four inch design or maybe go to the 4.7 inch design of an iPhone 8 but I do expect it to kind of keep that low price point, maybe keep the same design as the current level of iPod touches. I just don't think the market is big enough for Apple to be focusing on updating the design to be more like an iPhone 10, which would really increase the price and the iPod touch is meant to be a budget level device. We've also been hearing a lot of rumors and rumblings of an AirPods 2 release date. For AirPods 2, we can expect Hey Siri support. We can expect Apple to finally ship that wireless charging case. We've been hearing a lot of rumors that this version of the AirPods will include better sound. Maybe it will include better noise cancellation. We've also been hearing some recent rumors that AirPods 2 will have a matte finish, kind of similar to the Apple Pencil 2, something that won't slip out of the ears as easily, something that's more easier to grip. And of course, we've been hearing rumors that Apple will be introducing a new color to the AirPods line, so probably a black color 
for AirPods 2. And with AirPods 2 and with that wireless charging case, we've also been hearing that air power has finally been fixed by making it a thicker design. So maybe if AirPods 2 are released, if the wireless charging case is released, we might finally see the mythical air power make its debut at Apple's March event. But enough about what I think. Let me know what you think. What are you excited for in the Apple March 25th event? Are you excited for the new Apple TV service? Are you excited for the new Apple news service? What hardware announcements, if any, do you think Apple will make? Also, if you want to support the channel in any way, make sure you check out the links in the description. I'll have a link to my Amazon affiliate, as well as a link to the Greg's Gadgets merch store where you can buy some awesome t-shirts. I'd be honored if you join me on the Greg's Gadgets Discord. We're having a lot of fun discussions over there. And as always, if you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, including more coverage when this March event finally happens, be sure to subscribe. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.